You're listening to My Top 8, a relationship podcast about friendship. I'm your host, Maggie Mae Fish. Remember, the show does not condone ranking your friends in a list of eight people. And now, let's talk friendship. Oh, some friends go and some friends last. Some come talk on your podcast. If it make you laugh and they treat you great, then you put them on your top eight. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is a My Top 8. It's a show all about friendship and friends and what are friends. Do we need more of them? Do we need less of them? Maybe. Maybe uh, you need both. Maybe. Maybe you need both. <laughs> um, welcoming me today. With me today? Welcoming me today. Welcoming with Maggie today. Welcoming with me today <laughs> is uh, someone who actually is my friend. So this is very <gasps> We're exciting. Friends. We're friends. Uh, this is Bailey Norton. She's a wonderful comedian. You probably see me liking her stuff on Twitter all of the time. Eee. She's a very funny stand-up, is all over here in LA, um, and is also a good friend. Maggie, you're a good friend. You're a good friend. You are in my top eight, for <gasps> sure. Bailey, you're in for my sure. top eight. Really? Yes. I was not allowed to have a MySpace, <gasps> oh. and um, one time my mom, <laughs> my mom came in. And I was like, like the family computer was in her bedroom. And oh my god! <laughs> in your mother's bedroom. Yeah. I don't wonder why you were not allowed to. Have was my not space. allowed to have. But she didn't get home from work until like forty five minutes after I got home from school. So oh my I would, god! I would go home from school. I would get on MySpace. You had a sweet window right there to sneak in. It was the perfect amount of time. <laughs> and uh, one time she caught me, and mm. then I was like. I was like, well, you don't know that I'm on MySpace. And she's like, I can read your body language very well. And you are clearly hiding something from me. And then she made me go Ooh. through all of it with her. And yeah. I, at the point, I made my my about me say something like, my name's Bailey or Baywatch for you wild ones. Or oh something my like God, that. Really? <laughs> And I was like, the 12. person you were trying to be is like so funny. <laughs> I know. I'm not sure what what I was going for at all. I also did not know what Baywatch was. Oh, I believe you. I believe that you did it. I think you just like associate it with like something sexual, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I was like, it's hot, it's provocative. It's Guys will click on this. <laughs> Guys will like this. Yes. So wow. anyway, but you would be on my top eight. Oh, babe. You can definitely be on my top eight. This is fun because, uh, you know, we both moved out to L.A. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of like starting over with like your real mm -hmm. life friends, which is scary, horrifying. Totally. Um, And also and this whole podcast kind of sprang from me basically talking to my therapist yeah. about me not I didn't know how to make friends. I really the concept is kind of just like, oh, like whoever will hang out with me who's ever <laughs> fun. And that's like, yeah, so nebulous. <laughs> that's I know what you mean, though, because I feel like we were probably similar children in mm -hmm. that we were weird yes. and probably had one to two close friends in elementary school. Yep. And that's it. Uh-huh. They and ditched you in high school and then you <laughs> didn't know what to do. And then you were lost. Yes. And so anyone who will talk to you, you hold on to. I definitely uh, relate to that a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I don't know. But, but now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, it's very important to be selective about who you hang out yes, with because yes. it affects you on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, cut people out <gasps> Bailey. within the last year even. Wow. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that I think is like, that's a tough one. That's a tough one to do. It's is to, tough. Yes. And especially yeah. because when you make that stand and being like, okay, I did my work. I looked at this person. It, they're not serving in a great way. Like yeah. it's a one-sided relationship, whatever the conclusion is. Uh, cutting them out, it still can make you feel like a total fucking asshole. <laughs> I think it's worse. I think a friend breakup is way worse than an actual than an breakup. an actual breakup. Because it, it's somehow way more personal. It is. Because with with uh, like a love, a love relationship, there are so many other factors. Like our chemistry, our yeah. smell that you can kind of like. Pheromones. Pheromones. Sorry, pheromones babe. Pheromones are big. <laughs> <laughs> pheromones are real big. Um... <laughs> But it's true. But with a friend, it's like, oh, man, who you are does not click with who I am. Yeah. And you're bad for me. And I don't like you. You're bad for me. And I don't like you. And that's hard to say. It mm -hmm. sounds 
awful and, and it sounds personal yeah because yeah. it is it's it is. like relationships can be demoted to mm-hmm. friendships mm-hmm. and then sometimes that's even better for that relationship but friendships you can't really demote well i guess you can demote to like acquaintanceship or like mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't really be total strangers anymore right. unless a lot of time has passed. But like, yeah. I do feel like it's it's very scathing to tell someone you don't want to be their friend anymore. Right. It reminds me of uh, Chad's. Remember the whole voting fiasco when we, we voted President Bush and then like oh, yeah. the hanging like punch. It's like friends in your life that you cut out, they're still there. They're just like <laughs> the, the hanging Chad's of like, I guess I no longer am going to put time into this because it's not... It's not giving yeah. what I, you know, will yeah. benefit me in the long term. Yeah. I'm trying to say in the most impersonal way as possible. That is it. the most impersonal way you <laughs> yeah. can say it. <laughs> hey, would you like to be a hanging chad in my life? <laughs> Let's talk top eight. Uh, you definitely do not have to start with me. I'm going to start with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, barely. I will be starting with you. Uh, <laughs> Maggie, you're, oh. my, you're my number one in my oh top my eight. Oh my God. Actually, if I had a top eight, I would make a separate MySpace for myself and mm-hmm. make myself my number one square. Just because really? I feel like you should be friends with yourself. I feel like you should that definitely have a friendship with yourself. So strong, and I love that. And okay, I will say one of the things that I do really love about you as a friend. I love this podcast. Is so that it's, it's, <laughs> it really, you take such good care of yourself and – Thank you. And, like, you take time for yourself. Like, even now that you're in a relationship, you still spend time with yourself. You do things that you enjoy. And it is – it's such a joy to see you do that. It is. And it reminds me that, like, yes, I, too, need to spend time with myself, you know. Yeah. It's – You got to spend 100% of the time on this earth with yourself. So you might as well, like, have fun with that and enjoy yourself and take care of yourself, right? I I do enjoy my own company. I think mm-hmm. that's good. I think it would be very weird for me to continue talking about me being <laughs> with myself. I mean, hey, we have 45 minutes and... <laughs> We've got, oh, we got 45? Okay. okay. Uh, let me tell you uh, why I'm such a great friend of myself. Uh, who else is... Uh, I'm going to put my boyfriend. He's my friend. He's in my top eight. Yes. Yeah, let's talk about that a yeah. little bit. Uh, because, you know, being with a significant other mm-hmm. and like... Yeah, it is a form of friendship. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit different than other type of friendships. Um, it is different. It's very different. It's very different. But uh, In fact, I refrain, purposefully refrain from telling him that he's my best friend. Mm. Um, not that he isn't. He's certainly one of my best friends. But right. I don't. I don't like the idea that someone is your everything. You yes. know what I mean? That like you put all of your eggs in one basket friendship wise or like relationship mm-hmm. wise because I think then you get... That, that's how you lose friends in a relationship is by not like valuing your other friendships that you have yeah so i maybe that's just like a thing that's weird that i'm like i will not tell my, <laughs> my i will friend. never give him the satisfaction no, he can't have that for me <laughs> uh he is he's certainly one of my best friends no but, i think that's you know. a beautiful way especially because like that language of best friend like carries emotional baggage mm-hmm. and like Just reserving the right to, like, call a different friend your best friend, like, gives you that space to be like, yes, you're in my life, you're a big part of it, but never will I make you all of it. (laughs) Yeah, no, totally. I think, like, uh, it's just a good reminder for me to be like, of everyone else in my life, I need Mm -hmm. them there. And I want to make sure that I have them because, yeah. like, you know, the it's like it takes a village to raise a child. It's yeah. like, well, it also, like, takes a lot of people to, like, make you a complete person. And yeah. that's how I feel about him. But Jason is, like, the best. I yeah. do think he's really great. And he is so much fun to hang out with. Mm-hmm. And it is, I think, important to be friends with the person you're in a relationship with and to like them. That is huge, isn't it? It is huge. It's huge. I have definitely, I was listening to David Sedaris's like new book recently mm-hmm. and he was talking about his husband who he's, he's been with for like years and he was like, yeah, the other day me and Hugh had a fight and Hugh told me that he hasn't liked me since 2002. <gasps> <laughs> Whoa! 
Yeah, it was uh, it was great. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is weird to think that you don't like the, a person right. that you're spending a lot of time with. So I don't that know. That would be a big waste of chunks of your time all yeah. day long. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think there are, like, relationships that I'll see where people just kind of nag each other as, like, a cute thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's oh, it's cute how annoyed we are with each right. other. Right, isn't it cute? Or even, like, feeding off drama. Mm-hmm. I see couples do, which, like, weirds me out in a way. Yeah. Because it's yeah. like if you're only on each other other's side when there's a common adversary yeah what do you have what do you have when that's gone right yeah and also you know just thinking back to like you know my high school friends Mm -hmm. like I think that's when you're early on like that's a big part of it it's either just like what you have in common like oh we're all in theater we're all friends I guess Mm -hmm. or like oh we all hate that teacher I guess all of us are friends this whole class yeah it's a common bonding thing when you have a you know or when you have a common enemy that Mm -hmm. is like a strong bonding agent right which is like Good and bad because mm-hmm. it's like a negative emotion that is yeah. spurring a friendship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, like, again, if that was gone, would you still be friends? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Find out more on Maggie's podcast. Find out more on this podcast. Okay. Let's get down. Let's get down to it. I've, I'm gonna try to be Terry Gross this whole time. <laughs> right? Please. Yeah. You know what? The other thing that I like you as a friend is that you're not yourself, and I, I would Thank rather you. that be the case. <laughs> Thank you. This is fresh. This is fresh. Well, I did you and Jason, uh, were you friends beforehand or was it relationship no. first and we learned to be friends? It was relationship first strictly, which I don't Dope. Okay. know that I, yeah, it was weird. On, <laughs> on, <laughs> on 9-11, 2017. My God, tell us, Bailey. <laughs> Jason and I were booked on the same comedy show. And uh-huh. uh, we did not meet each other on that date, but there is like a poster. I actually looked at it last night. It's kind of cute. It's oh, like Bailey. Comedy show. And then it's like my name and Jason's name right next to Aww. each other. And then we kind of knew each- of each other through mutual friends. Right. And then. In the um, community, as you say. In the community. In the community. <laughs> and then uh, slipped into each other's DMs. Mm. And then, yeah. I mean, Wonderful. I don't. Like, we, like, conversation was easy. And it. I yeah. I think both of us were like, we're either about to be friends or about to be more okay, than friends. Yeah. And then it went very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're about to see. And uh then it, yeah, then it was clear very early on that it was like a more than friend situation. And yeah. then yeah. So then went from there. And yeah. We boned and uh We boned. <laughs> Then that was the indicating factor. Yeah. That it was more than friends. Yeah, but we also learned to be friends through the process, mm-hmm. which is an interesting dynamic. Yeah. I think similar. Yeah, Will and I were the same way. I know Will's not. Will is right here. <laughs> Though he said he's not going to be part of the podcast. Will's not a part of the podcast. <laughs> well, he's not a part of the podcast. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to look at you, Bailey, as yeah, I yeah. talk about him. Yeah. Uh, but same. Yeah, it was just uh, one night stand. They were both like, yay. And then. Yay. And then. <laughs> very quickly realize like oh this is either gonna be a fantastic friendship or more than that yeah if i have anything to say about it (laughs) (laughs) oh will by the way is also in my top eight will (gasps) oh yeah bailey oh my gosh i come home and tell you guys about my day like you are collectively my wife (laughs) (laughs) we do yeah i will say uh i feel like you know, this is not necessarily like a top eight situation, mm-hmm. but our home life mm-hmm. is to me like fulfills me. Me too. A lot. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is the happiest home I have been in since childhood. Same. Like I had a great childhood with, you know, my parents who wouldn't <laughs> let me have an internet presence, but like yeah. you guys let me and <laughs> <laughs> no. we let you use the internet, <laughs> you Bailey. You guys let me use the internet whenever I want. No, no, but I do love, I love coming home. If I've had a bad day, I will sit on the man, mm. like on the like little fireplace mm. bit. I don't, is this the lower bunk of the mantle? Of the mantle? <laughs> no, it is. It's like made out of fake marble. I yeah. don't know. It's a good bench. I sit on that. Will and Maggie sit on the couch across mm-hmm. from me and we all talk about our day yeah. and it is so nice. It's so nice. I really want to recommend it because, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, this podcast is about friendship, but like your roommates are in orbit of that yes whether or not they are your friends or just your roommates Mm -hmm. but like I cannot stress like having a wonderful like home life and just like 
your so little important. so important and it just yeah. like it makes every aspect so much easier <laughs> yes it really does yeah it really does uh you guys are the best oh you're the best babe oh, 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 we oh. love each other um yeah okay who else top eight though i'm trying to think what about uh i know if for just to catch some people up to speed Bailey and I had similar upbringings, which mm-hmm. is why I think now we just clicked so naturally. Yeah. I was like, oh, you used to be so weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Maggie, I had this moment that, like, I keep replaying in my head. Like, one of the most embarrassing things probably ever where in the oh. moment I was like, I am a hero of my own destiny. Like, I was a little kid and on the playground at elementary mm-hmm. school, and I was, like, making up a musical. And of course. And I was choreographing it. Naturally. Uh, also, important to note, I'm the only person in the musical. Oh, no, I knew uh, that, Bailey. You didn't need to say that. I, I knew. know you knew. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify For just everyone in at case. home, yeah. ensuring this. For everyone at home, imagining me with thousands of friends doing this on the basketball court no no um (laughs) it was just me Uh and this musical is about a mom who leaves her kid in a car (laughs) and uh, i'm drinking coffee i was about to spit it out (laughs) the mom leaves the kid in the car okay i am doing this dance routine about this I had <laughs> your interpretive dancing uh, musical about a mother leaving her child in a hot car. Is I added a, hot car because I want to. It's about a tragedy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a bunch of other kids wanted to use the basketball courts to play basketball. And they like, <laughs> they came up to me and they were like, hey, can we <laughs> please use this? <laughs> like, whatever you're doing, can we maybe do a little switcheroo and you go no. over there? <laughs> And I literally said the words, I'm creating. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. And I was like, I'm defending art. I'm standing up for myself. Oh. And I just could never apologize enough to the universe. Oh my God. <laughs> so that is so funny. I that's, did that. Is, that. That is a one. I'm so glad you are who you are today. <laughs> I'm glad that you didn't back down. Thank you, Maggie. But also, what I'm hearing from that story <laughs> is that you know, we were not always great friends because I was a bad friend. Yeah, actually. yeah. Like, I think in a different universe, like those kids came up and you were like, oh, you know mm-hmm. what, Bailey? This is an opportunity to try something new and hang out with some new kids and mm. you play basketball <laughs> for an afternoon. That's not what happened. Oh, no. That is, that's okay. <laughs> it is, it's not. No. You're not a bad person because I'm sure I well. know I did very similar things. <laughs> Well, I could see, you know, I could see us both kind of taking that path. Although I know you did play basketball and we're very good at it. Uh, um, yeah, but I didn't have friends because of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, sh- I want to actually note, I was, n- I w- truly was not a good friend in this elementary is, let's school. Let's dig into this. This is like a really fucked up thing, actually. Mm-hmm. Like I did some very fucked up, not okay behavior when I was in elementary school. Yeah. Uh, because I was best friends with a girl who mm-hmm. I will call Taylor. Taylor. And me and Taylor from first grade to fourth grade yes. were like th- the friends at the Ooh, school. Everyone, I know you know, that. they're yes. like they're always together. We hang out all the time. We Everyone call each knows. other all the time. Mm-hmm. And um I think I developed like a super codependent relationship on uh, this person. I sim yes, as yeah. well. My high really? school yes. We'll call her Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany and Taylor. Tiffany and Taylor. Those are girls. Our girls. Um yeah, I so first grade through third grade. Mm-hmm. Everything was like perfect. Okay, <sighs> me and this girl, we made a dog babysitting club oh together. My God, Bailey. Lemonade stands. We made you know, m- movies with my parents' camcorder. We oh. were writers, directors. We did it all. We were you like, did it all. we went through everything together. We were best friends. Mm-hmm. And then in fourth grade, we were in the same class again. Mm-hmm. And then there was another girl. We'll call her Tina. <laughs> loving, loving it. I am not great at thinking of names <laughs> on the spot. 
That's why I quit improv. Oh, you know what? From now on, I think I'm going to have a little jar of just made up names for my guests to pull. That is for such a good idea. Talking about, but for now, it's all teas. This oh, my is... God. That is such a good idea. Yeah. yeah, we'll keep the tea theme yeah. up. So what did I say? Tina? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it was definitely your name was Tina. And uh-huh. Tina and Taylor became really good friends in front of my eyes because oh, their desks no. got moved together. <gasps> and I was right behind <gasps> them. <laughs> I feel it like in my bones. Yeah. My heart sunk out of out like out of my body, like on the floor. I was like, Whoa. it's like someone's ripping your identity from you. Because it truly was. Yes. That's how it felt because mm-hmm. I was like, I am no one without yes. Taylor. I'm no one without her. You and now worked. Taylor and Dina are literally in front of me, bonding in front Whoa, of me. What? I'm at the That's desk like behind torture them. torture for a young It killed woman. me, Maggie. I was crying all the time. Oh I But I would also do like some really like not okay things. Like I would do... Well, you're in a desperate situation. Yeah. In your brain, it's like suddenly you do not have a personality. You do not have a life. You do not have anyone to hang out with. I was broken and I was acting crazy. I really yeah. was acting crazy. I would... Like, if Taylor and I would hang out, I would say things to her like, who's your best friend? <gasps> and you have to answer me. And, you have- <laughs> and she would be like, it's, it's you, Bailey. It's you. Oh. And then I remember one time she was like, I don't know. It might be Tina. And I was like, what do you mean it might be oh. Tina? And then we had to go to the counselors, like, oh every day. <laughs> oh, no. And it was... Like a nightmare. And yeah. looking back, I I was not nice to her. Like, she had every right to make other friends. Yes. And I was not having it. I was being abusive and mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's so it's so embarrassing to look back right. on because yeah. I'm sure that really fucked her up, too, in a lot of ways. Because she was super nice. Like, she was just a right. really nice, cool and I, person. And yeah. I was just being the most clingy like right it was like a mad boyfriend like yeah. you can't go out without me but yeah I understand that I think to like a degree like that was also my response if, mm-hmm. if not the straightforward like are you my still my best friend <laughs> yeah but like <laughs> that that feeling of especially when you're younger a friend can feel like the world it was the world it yeah was the world and like yeah, and suddenly having that ripped from you, mm-hmm. uh, yes, like a very similar thing. Except mine happened in fifth grade. Really, my my Tina like just decided that probably for similar. I was not as well adjusted as she was with mm-hmm. like making other friends. Uh, yeah, and I think I just I relied on her for so much that yeah, I'm sure it was suffocating, and I'm sure that's why she wanted to make you other just don't friends. Reali- you don't realize at the time that you're being like no. a hindrance to someone because it feels like love. It feels like you're it in this partnership, like love. and then you when they like you know mm-hmm. find some another person. What the cool response? The good thing to do mm-hmm. would be like. Awesome. I'm so glad you're making other friends. Right. That doesn't take away anything from our friendship. Yeah. It doesn't like but in my mind it was like everything is destroyed and you are no one. Yeah. And I do not <laughs> have a future. I don't have a Thanks. future. I am yeah. 9 years old and it's <laughs> over. Yeah. Um it was really bad. And then also I'm realizing I did the exact same thing to my kindergarten best friend. Mm. And I will say his real name because we're still like really good friends. Uh, his name's Alex. In fact, Alex. he was just in L.A. and we he left yesterday. We didn't hang out. Bye, Alex. <laughs> well, okay. He'll listen to the podcast and then he'll be mad about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we flake on each other all the time. That's, that's our, great. And yeah, it's one of those things where that, you know, I think hopefully that's okay. Neither of us care. And we, anytime yeah. we see each other, even if it's like been a decade in between, we're still, we pick up where we left off and we're still like really great friends. Can I say he's in your top eight somewhere? He's absolutely in my top hey, eight. He's thanks, absolutely Alex. in my top He's the best. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the best person. Uh, oh my gosh, there, I have, fuck, there's a lot of people in my top eight. Yeah. Um, well, I do want to, I also want to say real quick, I like, just contributing to this like my world is over if I lose a friend yeah because I I've heard that so many times Mm -hmm. uh and especially especially female friendships just because I think really we hold them to such like a high esteem in a good way Mm -hmm. um but I also realize that like most of the like stories that we grow up it's just about making friends there's no real great stories about 
losing friends. Losing friends or the hard parts about maintaining a friendship. Yeah. Uh, Because that is also super difficult. It's difficult. Um, And I really can't think of anything that would have been a good guide for me back then for having right. lost a friend, you know, like, right. In fifth, uh, I was still reading no stories in fifth grade. I was still reading Harry Potter. It's like, well, they're <laughs> still fucking best friends. Yeah. That's great for you three. Yeah. 19 years yeah. later. Jeez. Okay. Great. If only I had a Voldemort to bond me <laughs> with two other people, then I will permanently have friends, I yeah. guess. Yeah. That's all you need is right. just the master of darkness yeah to come into my life <laughs> that's all yeah um I, another one of my best friends mm-hmm. uh and i'll use her real name too her mm-hmm. name is macy and mm. she and i met when we were 12 we have the same birthday that's big it's big that that's was big. that was a huge bonding factor mm-hmm. and uh I don't know we just clicked like immediately and we're still Mm -hmm. friends now I went and visited her in Dallas not too long ago and our friendship has definitely not always been easy like Mm -hmm. into high school we definitely started butting heads Mm. I'm not sure why it it could be like you know you change as you get older and maybe we were not like great at accepting that but I remember this one time we like got in this fight and I snapped at her in front mm. of a lot of people. We were like in art class or homeroom or I don't know where we oh, were. Oh, I love fights in classrooms. Oh, you guys man. remember the drama? I Ooh. specifically, we were like teenagers all coloring and yeah. I don't know why I'm not, I don't think she said anything to even prompt this. I mm-hmm. think something just like snapped in me, but I called her a spoiled bitch or something in front of Ooh. all, like we were quietly coloring and out of nowhere I'm like, you spoiled bitch. Wow, really? <laughs> I know. And then it's just like so unnecessary and yeah. like so unhinged. And she was like, uh, what? <laughs> what? And I was like, okay, wow. I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, let me, um, let me take a step back to look at myself. For yeah. Me. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think I was mm-hmm. just like really struggling with the fact that like the people that we were when we were 12. Mm-hmm. We're different people from when we were 16 and 17 yeah. and I was like not reconciling that well mm-hmm. and didn't learn how to communicate my feelings yeah. in a way that was like rational or appropriate and so mm-hmm. I just like we ha- I had this like public outburst at her yeah. and she we like weren't okay for like months mm-hmm. maybe longer than that and yeah. then I think we were like we had to choose to continue being friends if that's what we wanted we're like well yeah. let's make this choice and like do that instead of like Aww. just fight with each other. So that's what's like yeah. they say that about like marriage. Like I, I'm gonna choose to do this. I'm gonna choose right. to like make decisions that will allow this relationship to continue. Right. Instead of like be an enraged crazy person. <laughs> I think that is a beautiful takeaway. That like choice and that conversation to be like. Hey, like, yeah, we should decide if this is, you know, a friendship worth like really sticking to for and, sure, like making apologies and, you know, still talk because you are in my top <laughs> eight. I also want to say that, like, uh, a thing that I have realized is very important like with my friends Mm -hmm. is like uh, you know just like a dash of like humility and being able to like say you're sorry because all of us hurt each other all the time whether on accident or not yes and the ability to have like a self-reflection and be like oh man I really did something wrong and I want to apologize like yeah to me that is such like a strong like person yeah and I just want to commend you because I think you are you're that way too you're that way too there's a very attractive quality that people have whenever like first of all you come off very confident I remember whenever I first (laughs) met you uh, Uh because I was friends with our mutual friend Aaron Aaron and you guys run an improv team together love Aaron I love him too he's so funny and so great and I would go to improv shows and I did not know who you were but I would Mm -hmm. see you on stage I was like Oh my god, she's <laughs> hilarious. She's like so fun to watch. And then I remember one time after a show, I was like, Oh, I remember. I'm gonna you do it. This. I'm just I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna talk to her. And <laughs> I like went up to you and I was like, Hi, um, you're so funny. <laughs> And, like, just did this, like, very, like, weird. Uh, and you were really nice, but I could tell you were like, I don't know you. <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah, no, it was fine. You were like, yeah. oh, thank you so much. And then you went and talked to whoever, and I was like, uh-huh. I blew it. No. Um, oh, no. Everything's ruined. Honestly, can I say, I think I was a little shell-shocked because you were so pretty. Because, <laughs> like, 
like I didn't know who you were and like it, and I think you were going out afterwards so you were just dressed like top knot <laughs> and you and I was just like oh thank you and then I think I was like I don't I don't know who that was <laughs> so yeah, it was it was partly I don't know who that was oh my gosh and that is so nice yeah. to know because I was like oh you did another social faux pas no. you tried to make a friend and you <laughs> fell on your face fuck me fuck, fuck me fuck, fuck me no. yeah it was like that it was yeah very Willem Dafoe moment in a wild at heart <laughs> except for not that context but Woo. um <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, Fuck me. First William Defoe reference. <laughs> I have such a crush on him and I hate it and it's not right. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. I'm glad that we're friends now. Then we were yeah. on an improv team and then we uh, became best friends. Yeah. And it's great. It's great. Yeah. Uh, anyway. The point of that was <laughs> yeah. to backtrack. Oh, we were talking oh. about attractive qualities in friends. Yes. And I was saying that you come off as like very confident. Aww. And then I remember one time you... We were, like, talking about something, and you were like, yeah, I used to feel very ugly and insecure, and mm-hmm. I did not like the person I was, and I'm really proud of who I am now because mm. I've, like, overcome those things. I was like, that's such a lovely, attractive <laughs> moment of, like, self-awareness, and Aww. I feel like those are the things that, that you can, like, relate to other people with yeah. when they're vulnerable, and, like, I've not always liked myself I've not always like been the person I want to be and Mm -hmm. like there's something very human about that that you can relate to and like feel safe with so you definitely have that quality and I like other people with that quality too that like makes me feel safe and makes you feel safe mm -hmm. and it's funny because I think now since we live in like the social media age (laughs) like so much of that like vulnerability is just kind of not the first thing that you see or know about people because yeah. online it's all anyone can be confident on Twitter. Anyone yes. can be confident on Facebook yeah. and uh and being vulnerable on social media is not It's not a platform where that's like set up to succeed. Right. It it yeah. doesn't set you up not to always. Succeed. Sometimes sometimes it does if right. it's done well. Yeah. And like you do the right Twitter thread right. or you post a picture. I don't know. I think maybe it is getting better. Like I do think I do agree but, it's getting yeah. better. But, I don't I don't think it was yeah. social media was set up with the thing in mind be like show the ugliest part of yourself. Yeah, let's all like real get <laughs> honest with each other about like what we need to work on. That's yeah. not really the It does MO. seem like maybe it is steering more towards that direction which I love. Yeah. And it makes me, me happy. Too. Yeah. Let's all be a little more uh, like yeah. Let's, let's all do it's it cuz it really is a breath of fresh air especially out here in LA because everyone wants to feel yeah. like they get it all figured out yeah well you know marketing yourself is one thing and yeah. then like being a good person and being a real person is a totally different thing yeah. and I think it's really easy in Los Angeles to mix those or to confuse those two like mm-hmm. what's real and what am I trying to market yeah and uh like I definitely have felt that way before mm-hmm. but I think like maybe if you're doing it right they don't have to be like so separate like yeah I, I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I know I, I'm like losing what I was even trying to say. But <laughs> no, I mean, I was just I was going to bring up like friendships like in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, like how has that been for you? <laughs> so whenever like before I moved to L.A., I was hearing things like it is the most isolating place and it takes because such a long time to yeah, meet people. You and I are both from the Midwest. And yeah. the number one thing people told me before moving out here was that I – I won't like it because of the people. The people yeah. are awful. The people are shallow. Like, yeah. it's not like the mid, you know. I so. remember quickly being surprised. And maybe, because we both are, like, gregarious in public yeah. and, like, friendly. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like, that is easy. To, like, that if you're that way, you mm-hmm. have an easier time making friends rather than if you don't get out and talk to people. I think also, like, UCB improv classes helped me make yeah. friends. Because, like... If you sign up, you've got 16 automatic people who want to hang out with you and, like, bond with you. And I feel like through every class that I took there, I I made a friend. And I don't, you know, don't continue there anymore, but that's fine. Like, the friendships there were everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, I don't know. I just remember being so surprised by how nice everyone was out here. Like, truly, just people on the street. I remember going to Panda Express on Sunset Boulevard, and I was like... Oh, they're not gonna like. They're gonna be mean. And it was like my first they're day here. They're gonna be mean. I Panda like, Express. The people at Panda, Panda Express, Express, like, Express they just really don't mean. have time for me. And uh, <laughs> they will not serve me. <laughs> <laughs> they will not serve me. Well, I just, I was like very yeah. surprised by like 
how much like home it felt yeah. like just everyone was like yeah I'll talk to you like I'm happy to have a conversation with you yeah. no one seemed like in a hurry or annoyed and mm-hmm. I, uh yeah I I feel like I made more friends in LA the first year than I did in the whole time I lived in Missouri so <laughs> yeah uh I love yeah I think it was great immediately that being said there are also people here who I've like who have been that person trying to market themselves and then I found yeah. out later and it like really ruined a friendship. Yeah. And so that, but that really has only happened maybe twice. Yeah. So, and that's really not, and I would agree. I think most people in LA are not that like. I don't think they are either. stereotypical. Like, yeah. Every yeah. once in a while you'll get a person that's just like, oh my God, are you real? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are people who blow my mind. Blow my mind. But very rarely. Very rarely. And yeah. also a lot of those times people people like that portray themselves as the same way as mm-hmm. like very nice, very gregarious. And, yeah. But it doesn't take that long to be like, oh, you kind of just talk about yourself all the time. Yeah. Or you kind of talk bad about other people. That means you're probably talking bad about me as soon as I mad leave. shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. I can tell you how many times I've like left a room or like <laughs> shut a door to leave and I've been yeah. like, I cannot imagine they're saying anything good about me now. <laughs> I can't like, I imagine. I really wonder they're... what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, my God. I don't know. LA people, really cool, really nice for the yeah, most part. For the most I have part. found. Yeah. Uh, and another takeaway that um, I think is really important, especially for people not living in LA, it's just that like, Joining a class can be your gateway into yeah. like meeting new people. That's what I think with it. If you move to any city, I have to, mm-hmm. another top eight. My friend Will. Um, Will. He, Welcome, Will, to being on Bailey's top eight. Hi, Will. Uh, hi. Also, hi, Chris, his husband. They're great. Oh, hi. Uh, hi. I just Will visited them in Oregon and they Ooh. were talking about like moving to a new place and like mm-hmm. they didn't know, they don't know anyone there. Right. They truly don't know anyone. And I was like, you should take any kind of class that you any have interest class. in, mm-hmm. take a pottery class. Like, like grow I think bonding around like a common goal whether that's yeah. like learning how to do improv or learning scrapbooking how to anything volleyball team yeah because it puts you on the same level and you're growing at the same pace and mm-hmm. so I think that's like really good uh environment to you know make friends in yeah. so that was my advice to them just like do something take a class that any kind great advice and if like if you're someone with like social anxiety and that seems like terrifying mm-hmm. just take a class and like don't talk to anyone but be near people yeah and then take another class and do another baby step be like okay i will talk to one person <laughs> this time you know my i took a the last improv class i took at ucb was 412 uh-huh. and on the first day i remember being like I don't know why I did this, and maybe it was weird, but... uh, Uh, I'm going to just make a guess that it was. It was weird. Okay. Um, It was... I I don't... Okay. I truly don't know what compelled me to do this, but I did stand up, and I was like, hey, uh, hi, everyone. I'm having a Harry Potter birthday party on (gasps) Saturday, and I would love for you guys to come. Oh, my God. I went to that party. You were there. I was there. I think think Will, who is not here, was there, too. Yeah, okay. (laughs) um but yeah i just remember being like i don't know like maybe people are having a hard time getting to know other people Uh, i i don't care i would Mm -hmm. love for anyone to go to the party and so and a lot of people actually came and like i'm still friends with a lot of them and it was super fun it's awesome but yeah if you take a class and you are shy a lot of times there is someone who's like (laughs) please be friends with me in the class and who will scream that and then you can be friends with them yeah that makes you feel safe and not if not don't go. Right. And that's fine too. Yeah, like to, if I feel like some people who are shy like feel that they need to change to make friends, but like no. I love having friends who are shy because I'm yeah. not shy and like you opposites attract. Right. I am make, happy to make myself you make a great like an team. idiot. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. No, for sure. I I think yeah, people think shy is like a bad thing. I totally mm-hmm. do not think because most shy people are not shy once you get to know them anyway. Right. Yeah. And even if they are like reserved, that doesn't mean that they don't offer anything. Like, right. Uh, my younger brother is also in my top eight. One of my oh, best friends of all baby. time. My brother's in my top eight too. Oh, I love both of my God. brothers are amazing. Also in my top eight. I have like <sighs> 25 people in my top eight. I um, love it. <laughs> <laughs> but my younger brother Robert is one of the closest people to me in the entire world Aww. and he is very he's the kind of person who 
like as you're getting to know him, he does not say much. But mm-hmm. when he talks, it's like gold. Everything he says is like oh, that's beautiful, hysterical, and thoughtful and smart. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like I'm the opposite, where like I'm just shitting out of my mouth, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just unhindered <laughs> vomit diarrhea. Yeah, outside of my just mouth. truly not thoughtful. True. <laughs> uh, truly careless, some would say. <laughs> just carelessness. <laughs> just carelessness. But he and I, uh, I think. Our our conversations flow really, really well because whenever he's not saying something, I am. And whenever I'm saying something that means absolutely nothing, he's he's like dropping gold nuggets. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I think it's great to have people in your circle who are different from you because yeah. it makes, I don't know, expands your mind, yeah. makes your conversations more interesting, makes your life richer. If your friends are too alike, ask yourself, why? Yeah. Who the fuck? What, what <laughs> the fuck? And it's okay if there's a good reason, but it's okay to be like, hmm, what yeah. is that? There's no wrong answers here. So speaking of friends that we should all treat equally and it's not a competition, yeah. uh, let us now have a competition about who would be better friends. Let us. So Let us compete. Let us compete. Um... So basically, I haven't come up with a name for this segment yet. Oh my god, we're bo- we're joined. We have been blessed. We have been blessed <laughs> by a cat joining us right now. The presence of my cat ghost. She Baby has just um, jumped on the table. Ghost is pretty good. She's a good friend. Ghost is a great friend. She's a great friend. She kills so many bugs in this apartment. <laughs> she oh yeah, if you're afraid of a bug, she will she's been bringing me uh she brings me things at night like straws. Lately, mm. she's been bringing me this little aluminum ball. Aww. That she loves, and it uh, makes my heart explode because it's. It means when they bring you their stuff, it means like they super like you. Wow, Ghost super liked me. Wow. She's a sweetie. She's a sweetie. Okay, so uh, basically, how this is gonna go is we're both going to present a pair mm-hmm. of friends. Okay, and we're gonna make a little bit of an argument about why they're really great friends for each other, their positive Perfect. qualities. Uh, and then on Twitter, you guys are gonna vote, and you guys get to decide who you think is a better friend group, a, okay. or you know, friend duo, friend duo, friend duo. Uh, okay, yeah, it'll build on each week. So, yay! Yeah, we'll I'm see so how far excited. You can get. Um, Should uh, I go first, or do you want to go first? Why don't you, why don't you guess? Why don't you go first, my friend? Thank my you. friend. My go friend. First. My friend. Say friend as many times as you can. <laughs> uh, okay, so mine is from the Sandman graphic novels by Neil Gaiman. Ooh. I have these two people tattooed on my leg, in wow. fact. Wow. And it is, they're they're siblings, mm-hmm. and Aww. they're the perf- they're perfect for you. They're soulmates. Um, and it's Death and Dream. Uh, and okay, so oh man, this is gonna get super. I just love these books so much. Let's like, get deep. Let's, what makes <sighs> okay. let's get deep. So death is the sister, and mm-hmm. she's the personification of death. And <laughs> uh, but she is like the most sunshiny person. Aww. She makes everyone feel so safe and so loved and mm-hmm. so validated. Aww. She's not scary. Uh, she like, you know, she represents the ending of something mm-hmm. or like the thought of something ending. Uh, but she is like, she's comforting, ju- she's comforting yeah. and like kind and really fun to be around. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, a cool goth bitch. Yeah. I am. This, <laughs> I'm this girl for Halloween every year, <laughs> every year, every single year. And I tweet at Neil Gaiman every single year and he never likes it. <gasps> what? I know. Next year. Neil Gaiman. Yeah, let's call him out. You know what? I have a new <laughs> purpose for this podcast is to get Neil Gaiman to just uh, throw Bailey a bone, all right? Please. Please. That's what friends do. They help each other out. <laughs> I just want to lie. help each other meet celebrities. <laughs> oh, that'd be my dream. Anyway, so Death is like, Death is that person. Mm-hmm. Her brother Dream is the personification of like storytelling and, and personal narrative mm-hmm. and cultural narrative mm-hmm. and he's very broody and mm. like so much darkness like so emo all the time it's insane so, mm-hmm. like so he's like just depressed kid and she's like utter sunshine but she yeah. stands for the ending of things and he stands for like the, the middle yeah, yeah the possibility the dream like everything right. like he's the sand man that's mm-hmm. what it's all about he's like He's the king of stories or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think they're like the best duo because they bring out 
different sides of each other. Like, mm-hmm. she's, like, pretty much the only person, because they have seven siblings total, but she's, like, the only one who can really talk to him about things and, like, yeah. get him to, like, I don't know, think about himself and think about what he does and uh-huh. why he matters. And then I think that he's important to her because, like, I don't know, uh, you can't, like, if you you have to consider an ending when you're considering like a story a story if yeah. you're a writer or you know just like the ending of dreams or whatever so mm-hmm. they like really bring out like this awesome combination in each other Aww. and they love each other and they fight sometimes uh-huh. but they're like so i have the panel tattooed on my leg where they first appear and they're just like sitting in a park just feeding birds and it's the greatest <laughs> uh, and i love them and i should think of more things to say about them but no that's beautiful and just yeah. like the reason that I, I love like literary stories mm-hmm. and especially like friends in uh, literary stories is one because I mean before you make friends that's the first like introduction to friends you mm-hmm. have is like your mom reading a storybook about like two blobs yeah. meeting or whatever and you're like oh I guess that's friends oh I guess they're good like oh I guess I you know yeah. should make them and not just love my mom or yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah and I think they they give us like great like examples of like friendships and just the fact of Mm -hmm. like bringing out the best in each other like that's like that that's the best ideal for any friendship and I've definitely had friendships that brought out like bad parts of me same and didn't realize it till like years later or like like, oh I've been drinking alcohol every single day (laughs) for a year I have no money and I'm sad constantly yeah time to make a change time to make a change or (laughs) man I really never want to gossip again I shouldn't make a change yeah yeah Yeah. totally but uh uh, yeah no uh, these two are like sunshine and the moon they're like very yeah it's really really lovely it's beautiful i could actually probably cry just like talking about it it reminds me of like me and my brother because i feel Mm -hmm. like i'm the more like outgoing one and he's probably he's really the smart like cool he's Mm -hmm. like a poet and yeah yeah i don't know they remind me of me and my brother and we're besties yeah that's beautiful yeah Okay, well, mine is probably just as epic. Okay. Uh, and it's really, it's, I've been working on this uh, for, like, a different project, but that's why it's fresh in my mind. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to present Tommy and Chucky. Of, oh, damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> of Rugrats. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, to me, uh, Tommy and Chucky have always been, like, a very, like, soft spot in my heart. Just because... Rugrats is so good. It's so good. And... So Chucky obviously is a child who does not fit in and mm-hmm. has a lot of things in his life that mm-hmm. make his life, you know, more. He doesn't have a mom. He's got giant red hair. Gla- you know, he's terrified of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, in that similar way, like Tommy loves him, like because of all of those things. Yes. Yeah. yeah and not in spite. And even though they are two completely different people, they love what they see in each other. And there's a wonderful episode where... Um, Chucky sees his life if he had never been born. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very I dark. I love how deep uh, Rugrats is cut. <laughs> and basically he sees Tommy like a scared child because he doesn't have anyone to bounce off of. Like Chucky makes Tommy brave mm-hmm. and Tommy makes Chucky break too, and it's oh, it's I love beautiful. that. And that that uh, like that dynamic, that exact dynamic is actually interesting because it mm-hmm. is the same as like death and dream in yeah, a way. In like a way. like yeah. death is very much the Tommy, mm-hmm. and then dream is very much like the Chucky. Just like I'm sad. Is it okay that I'm sad? Right. Is it okay that I have weird feelings and I'm not comfortable a lot yeah, of and time? I'm different. Is this okay? Yeah. Is it okay? And then the other one's like. Yeah, in fact, it's great, <laughs> yeah. and I need you. Yes. Yeah, I love it. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, uh, God, the Rugrats. They're so great. Like, to me, there's so many great instances of friendship in that show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in, in a very similar way. Yeah, they are they are there for each other, and what they see in themselves as flaws, they have a friend there to be like, that's not a flaw. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's who you are. That's yeah. a part of you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So anyways, let's, again, yeah, everyone, please fight about this. <laughs> please fight. Uh, fight to the death. <laughs> fight to the death. I hope this destroys friendships. friendships. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and finally, we've come to the thesis of this show. <laughs> 
Oh, I love this uh, podcast, Maggie. You know what? I think I, friendship is really, really important. It is. And it is. We we. I feel like we don't talk about it a lot. Yeah, I think like think about it like songs and like movies all a lot of it's about romantic right. relationships and mm-hmm. not i mean uh, you know maybe maybe that's just what i watch i'm sure there's a lot of great no. stuff out there i mean tale is all this time it's about ro- yeah yeah it's about Most love things be about love yeah. yeah but um platonic love i is so important yeah it makes romantic love more supported yes. it's like it's the best it is the best thing i remember because like i Went through a long time where I was just, like, chronically dating people. Like, I was a serial mm-hmm. dater. And then I went through a few years where I was just like, what if I just nurtured friendships? And what mm-hmm. if I just, like, let this be the thing that I put, uh, you know, pay attention to? Mm-hmm. And it was the most rewarding, like, Aww. few years of my life. Because yeah. I was like, oh, a lot of people are, like, helping me figure out what my identity is and, like, what yeah. I'm good at. And I'm able to, like see what I value in people Mm -hmm. and not just like one person. So yeah, platonic friendship is so, so potent and good. It's potent. It is good. And my my therapist uses this image of like creating like a house inside yourself Mm -hmm. where, you know, you just come from a place of like confidence and you love yourself and like, Friends are basically the furniture in that house. It's like oh, I like who's that. It's like a great in, yeah picture yeah who fills out like this beautiful like slice of earth that you know yeah I get to be a who part gets of. to like come be in the thing you yeah. made yeah it's so cool mm-hmm. oh that's such a great your therapist sounds great she, yeah she's pretty great I want to go but Bailey I want to thank you for being such a good friend because you really truly are so are you I love you <laughs> I love you um. Uh, even though you were the only friend I've ever had who punched me in the face. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're the I, only, I punched people in the <laughs> face. You're the only I person oh. who's ever punched me in the face. Oh. And it just, we both cried and hugged. We and both it was cried great. and hugged. Yeah, we did. It was <laughs> amazing. So bad. Uh, you, Regina, george me, basically. <laughs> and I'm that girl who's like, Regina George punched me in the, the face. face. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> It was an accident just for anyone who oh, doesn't know the story. Oh, total accident. But yeah. I absolutely decked her in the nose. <laughs> she has a fucking crazy hook. It yeah. hurt so bad. And I it was rad. It, <laughs> it was bad. Uh, well, this was Loved lovely. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Please follow Bailey on Twitter and yeah. Instagram. And she also designed my logo of my face, which I still need to tweet out. Oh, Ooh. dude. Write that down. Uh, but yeah, if you go look at it, Bailey did that. She is a talented, talented artist. Thanks, uh, but Yeah, if you need anything designed, go to her as well. I'll Not design your jokes. stuff. I'll do anything for you. Love, I'll do it. <laughs> what did we learn, Bailey? <laughs> what is this podcast about? No, French, 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 and it's about French, French, French. You can't buy it. You can't buy it. Slap, mm-hmm. slap, slap. <laughs> uh, but anyways, thank you guys all for listening. If you guys have any questions about friendship that you like, want me to ask my guest, uh, feel free to like tweet it at me. Ooh, yeah. I would, you know, not that we're like certified friend specialists. But we know we've been around the block. <laughs> we know what we're doing here. Let's just say I have them. She, Maggie, I yeah, have them, Maggie's so. got friends. I can say that. Yeah, I've uh, seen them. I've, I've seen them. I've seen Maggie's friends. All of them. Three of them are ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they're like really actually yeah. pretty cool. The ghosts are no, but really, I hope this is a thing where we can all learn about how to make our little houses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love this. Yeah. Well, Cheers. thanks for inviting me into our living Anytime. room. Cheers. Thanks for listening to my top eight. I'm your host Maggie Mae Fish. If you like what you heard and you want to help me bring you more, head over to patreoncom Mayfish where you can support the show, and check out patreoncom smallbeans where you can support my wonderful friends who help make this show possible. Find me on Twitter at Maggie Mae Fish and let me know your thoughts on friendship. Until next time, goodbye, friends. <laughs>